This is Pastor Nathan Willard at Anchor United Church of Christ. And we're talking about First Peter here. It is Wednesday, May 27th. Um, and we're in First Peter 1. Like I said, this is going to be a more rapid uh, tour through the book than we did for James or Thessalonians. And so one of the things that I'm going to do as we go along is give hints. If you want to study this some more on your own, what are things to look for? And today, a couple of things we're going to look for. One is the sense that the author of 1 Peter is really um, engage, engaged in apocalyptic thinking. That is thinking about the end times and the ends of things. And we'll get into why that might matter later on, but we get the sense that he's into the apocalyptic. Also, um, the author of 1 Peter is really concerned about prophecy. Um, and that is a thing also that comes in a little bit later on. Um, but we're going to start there with that, that First Peter is talking to this audience and he wants to focus on um, the things that happened to Jesus and uh, the things that might portend for us right now. Um, and I'm going to break this reading up into two parts. Like I said, we're going to be doing a little bit more um, uh, uh, reading. Uh, so starting with verse nine, uh, verse eight. Although you have not you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Pretty basic uh, opening, saying, "Hey, look, the the good feeling you're having, even though you don't see Jesus, um, you see the good that Jesus is doing in your life, and that's an important thing for us in the church." 10. Concerning the salvation, the prophets who prophesied, prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. And once again, here, as you're looking into First Peter, if you're looking into that, um, right now you see uh, this call talking about the prophecies, the prophecies in the past. And one of the things um, that's going on there is in Jewish tradition, by and large, prophecies are meant for something immediate. Now, First Peter is saying, hey, uh, you may think that's the case, but in the past, uh, these prophets looked deep into their souls and gave you something uh, for your own lives. Okay, so now we've got the long part. Therefore... Prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace of Jesus Christ uh, that Jesus Christ will bring when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke his Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, seed through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. That's a quote, I believe, uh, from Isaiah down at the end. And there are a couple of things to remember there. First of all, um, as we're looking through First Peter, they're uh, talking about some theology there and saying, hey, God, draw your uh, love uh, 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 your love in the grace uh, of Jesus Christ and know that you um, were not bought with gold and silver. And this is a way to separate out the living of sort of the world, um, of the material world from uh, the idea that you can be separated from it. You can have um, things that are higher aspirations, that while you live in the world, you don't need to be bound by the rules of the world, like by gold and silver. This will be important later on, um, as is Peter's introduction to the idea of obedience. But the thing I want to pull out here in this letter as you're reading it is he is saying that now is the end of time. The end of all time. When Jesus comes, it is the end of all time. And that's how we get the sense that this is an apocalyptic letter. It's got some concern with the end times and also keeps us in mind for later on. That um, the author of 1 Peter thinks that we are living in the end times, that um, Jesus' return is probably imminent or else we're in the midst of building that. And we can get into a lot of quibbles about that. But that's important for interpreting part of the letter later on, just like it was in Thessalonians. For now, though, I encourage you to remember that like God said, 
you are holy for I am holy. Okay, and so that's one of those moments where as we're living in this life, your lives are holy. The things that you do are sanctified by God. And it's a good reminder to us all that we have worth. We have inherent worth as individuals. This is Pastor Nathan Willard at Anchor United Church of Christ.